Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous by Owlcat Games and Paizo Publishing. Now, honestly, I feel like this game doesn't really need an extensive introduction. I mean, I did do something like 50 videos about it before it even came out. But for those who somehow missed it, it is a retro-style fantasy CRPG with an optional turn-based or real-time with pause combat system based on the uh, Wrath of the Righteous series of adventure modules using the popular Pathfinder tabletop rule system. Now, uh, we are going to be jumping in momentarily. We've got a lot, a lot of ground to cover. Um, we will have to retread some general material given that I ran the beta series out to the about the end of Act 2. But we're going to be using a new character, I'm going to make a new set of decisions, and hopefully that should change things enough to keep it fresh. But before we do, uh, I should of course thank the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Revenant, Aloise, a nerd in Warpaint, Antonio Hernandez, Dragon Matrix 7, Excelsior, Goatlieb, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Pitkowski, and Valenrook. You guys know who you are. That said, let's get started. Okay, first things first. Difficulty. We are going to be playing on core difficulty. Uh, basically, I'm going for as close to the tabletop experience as I can get. Enemies are full strength and more numerous. That'll give us a bit more loot and XP, but we'll have to really work for it. And um, we are going to make a few tweaks here, just for the sake of streamlining the series. While I do, of course, appreciate a proper challenge, I also want to make sure things keep moving, and I do want to allow for the occasional course correction, as needed. So we are going to enable character retraining. I don't know if I'm actually going to use it, I do like to have the option. Basically, if I find out I made a terrible decision, I want to have some wiggle room, just so we don't have to roll things back too far to fix it. We're also going to go ahead and turn off encumbrance-based movement speed. It is immersive, which I appreciate, but it is also not fun to watch your characters crawling around at 5 miles an hour. Doubly so when um, it's supposed to be in a video series. I don't think anyone's going to disagree on that. And finally, um, I did debate it a bit, but we are going to turn on Death's Door. That won't prevent our characters from dying, but it will give us a small buffer zone between uh, tenuous life and instantaneous crit-fueled death. Again, that's not so much because I want things to be easier, but it's more because I just don't want to have to roll things back too frequently. It's not fun, and it doesn't make for a good video. With just the occasional bit of death, as opposed to having to roll things back every time one of our characters randomly takes a 4x crit to the face. And yeah, I think that's good. I might make a few further tweaks off screen once uh, I've really had a chance to think about this, but nothing's really jumping out at me. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Oh, you are a nightmare. Go away. So, going back to the uh, Raiders real quick. Thanks for your support, guys. Uh, just like with Creed Iron Fang, our character this time out is also partially designed by a series of polls I ran over on my Patreon. Last time, we ended up with an Oread Crusader. And this time, the polls have pointed me towards a dex-based Halfling Hunter which I am looking forward to putting through its paces. Now, I have given this a fair amount of thought, and from what I understand, the Hunter class is essentially a hybrid of the Cavalier and the pet-based Ranger classes. We lose a lot of the free Martial feats that would normally go with Cavalier or Ranger, but we get a boatload of free Teamwork feats in their place, which we automatically share with our pet. And then, um we lose about 25% on base attack bonus, but we theoretically make up for that with more divine casting. We can go up to 6th level nature spells, and we pick up a special animal focus ability. 
which for us is essentially going to amount eventually to a plus six dexterity bonus, and then probably the rogue's evasion ability via aspect of the mouse. I think ultimately what we're going for here is a mounted dodge tank with a heavy focus on attacks of opportunity and crowd control, especially once we start getting the uh, mythic trickster tricks into the mix. We're aiming for about a mid-level damage output. We're going to start off really low, but that should shore up once we hit level 4 and 5, which will give us access to Mounted Combat and Fencing Grace, respectively. But the bulk of our real damage is going to be coming from our backline range strikers, so it's really just the hunter's job to uh, keep people off of them and, you know, occasionally kill someone. With that in mind, it is imperative that we take a background that grants mobility as a class skill, because apparently hunters do not get that by default. I've looked at all our options, and I think our best bet is River Kingdom Daredevil, which grants us both mobility proficiency and uh, a free plus two to our armor class against attacks of opportunity. And that is actually pretty ideal. Um, essentially, when I was running Creed, I noticed that when you're mounted, enemies tend to primarily focus on attacking your mount, except for when you trigger attacks of opportunity. If you cruise past someone, they'll attack the rider instead. My train of thought here is that we're going to really stack mobility. We're going to take mounted combat, indomitable mount, and spirited charge. And eventually, as an aspiring trickster, we're eventually going to get the ability to counterattack anyone who takes an attack of opportunity against us in combat. My ultimate goal is to eventually be able to just make spirited charge after spirited charge through enemy formations, tripping and counterattacking everyone in a five mile radius. Not sure if it'll work, but it certainly sounds fun. As far as stats go, obviously our biggest dump is going to be into dexterity. We need that both for offense and defense and to keep our mounts alive. We'll crank that up to 19 with the goal being to set it to 20 at level 8. We also have to shore up our strength, at least a little. Uh, although we are a dex build, we need to have a high enough encumbrance rating to comfortably wear a full kit of light armor and accessories, because otherwise we'll be suffering minus 3 penalties to a bunch of important stats. I think 10 will get us by, at least in the early game. We are going to want to eventually shore that up, though, just to give us some extra wiggle room. Otherwise, every time we get fatigued, we'll also become encumbered. Speaking of which, um, let's go ahead and pull two points out of Charisma. That's a pretty safe dump stat for us. We are going to be investing in Persuasion, but in that case, it's more about the ranks than the overall score. And we will immediately put those points into Constitution, just to make ourselves slightly less of a glass cannon. After that, we have to crank our Wisdom all the way up to 15. That's because our minimum wisdom needs to be at least 16, so we can cast 6 level divine spells. I figure we'll give that stat a bump up to 16 once we hit about level 12. That should be right before it becomes relevant. That leaves us with 3 more points to play with, and all 3 of those are going into intelligence. Which might seem a bit odd, but that is both to meet prerequisites, but also because we need that extra skill point. Um, in my testing, I realized no one in our party had a strength over 10 or athletics training. So our hunter needs to uh, pick up the slack there. That aside, uh, it turns out there is some interesting synergy between athletics and the mythic trickster path. And I would like to dabble in that a bit. We're never going to be great at it, but it is a nice thing to have in our pocket just in case. So we're pretty much done with stats. That brings us to skills, and uh, I feel like I've already covered most of the important stuff here. We will of course invest in athletics, which despite our lack of a strength bonus, we actually pull a plus two racial bonus on. Not to mention, uh, as an impending trickster, we'll eventually also get a plus three to all skills, so that'll give us a base bonus of plus five. Not great, but passable. And then, of course, we're going to put a point into uh, mobility for about a million reasons, at least a few of which I have already stated. 
That starts off at a respectable plus 11, and it's only going to go up from there. I'm actually reasonably certain we should be over 20 by the time we start cruising the world map in Act 2. That'll be about the time we tag in mounted combat, which should hopefully provide a pretty decent defensive buffer. Then we'll also toss points into perception and nature lore for obvious reasons. We're a hunter, we might as well play the part. With our final point, as aforementioned, going into persuasion. And that is an interesting one because, as I previously stated, um, the overall score here isn't going to matter a whole lot. We're always going to have other people in the party who are better at persuading than us. What is important, though, is that we keep stacking ranks there because one of the mythic abilities revolves around the number of ranks you have in Persuasion, not your overall score. It would be nice if we could stack that a bit higher just to give ourselves a better chance of triggering the relevant abilities, but I'm not too worried about it. There's no shortage of Persuasion-boosting enchantments and items, so I think we'll be able to shore that up pretty nicely by the time those abilities actually come into play. After that, we get our feet, and this is a no-brainer. We have to take Weapon Finesse. Uh, right off the bat, it's the difference between a plus zero bonus to hit and a plus four bonus to hit. Not to mention it's a prerequisite for Fencing Grace, which we won't be able to grab till level five. As aforementioned, our biggest problem here is going to be that our damage output for the first three levels is going to be garbage. It's going to be like 1d4 with no modifiers. But we should see a significant spike once we hit about 4, which is when we can ride our Leopard, and then again when we hit 5 and pick up Fencing Grace. Next we have Patron Deity. And as per the Raider's decision, we will be going with Callistria, the Goddess of Passion, both for um, vengeance and, you know, other things. I will freely admit I am not really familiar with this goddess, aside from that one mission from Kingmaker, but um, she does, on paper, appear to be a pretty good fit for the trickster path. I will admit, I am, uh, I'm pretty curious to see exactly how she gets involved in the campaign, since the deities all take a more active role in Wrath than they did in Kingmaker. It also helps that um, her favored weapon is Rapier, which is the weapon we're going to be going with. I mean, the odds of her lobbing us a divine rapier of Callistria are pretty slim, but you never know. It's not beyond the realms of possibility. This is Pathfinder, after all. Stranger things have definitely happened. After that, we've got our animal companion, and as per the fickle whims of the raiders, we'll be going with a leopard mount, uh, which honestly suits me just fine. From what I understand, this is the only animal companion that's keyed off of dexterity instead of strength. We should be rocking a plus seven dex bonus to both armor class and two hits right off the bat. Plus, I believe this is the only animal that uh, hits its growth spurt at level four, at which point it'll also start using dex for damage, and we can start riding it. As if that weren't enough, it also gets a tripping bite attack, just like dogs and wolves. Except, in this case, because it's keyed off dexterity, it opens the door to really stacking our bonus to trip with feats like Fury's Fall and Agile Maneuvers. After that, we've got spells, and nothing really fancy here. We're just aiming for an assortment of useful buffs. Short-term Long Strider will help offset our halfling speed, but it will, of course, become much less useful once we can start riding everywhere. And then beyond that, um, I am hoping to have greater enduring spells by the time we hit about level 10 or 11. So at that point, uh, we should be able to cast a variety of other useful buffs with 24-hour uh, durations, so we can one and done them at the beginning of extended dungeon crawls. Honestly, uh, given that uh, we are going to be leaning into a bit of a caster-heavy party this time out, I'm likely to uh, slap greater enduring spells on at least three characters. Being able to cast spells like Crusader's Edge or, or Greater Heroism with 24-hour durations is incredible. As for alignment, um, we're going to go middle of the road, kind of. I want to mix things up a bit here. Uh, I want to keep it interesting. I don't want to go full good like I did with Creed. I don't want to be evil all the time. 
I'm going to make a mix of decisions in either direction, but always leaning towards chaotic, just to see uh, what sort of responses we can prompt. Overall, we're going to be running this guy as somewhat self-centered, but reasonably decent. He'll help someone who is clearly in need of assistance, but he'll demand rewards otherwise. He'll be good to his friends, but it'll take a while for people to actually become friends. He'll be flippant in the face of authority and uh, escalate if people keep pushing him. And if someone outright betrays him, then uh, they probably get stabbed in the throat. But, you know, we'll play that by ear. If someone thinks about betraying him or betrays him in a way that doesn't hurt him directly, then, then he might give them a pass as long as they make proper amends. We'll see. We are, after all, chaotic. We've got to keep people guessing. Which pretty much concludes the actual mechanical stuff for our character generation. So at this point, it's really just cosmetics and character details. Let's go ahead and see if we can match that image. We need a, a proper furrowed brow of consternation. Yeah, that'll do. And then we'll slap some gruesome scars on there for some extra scowl factor. Very nice. And unfortunately, I don't think we actually have that braided style from the picture. But that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll just take this one and we'll say he let his hair down. The profile picture's outdated. It's from his uh, River Kingdom driver's license. And we'll uh, also slap some nice chunky mutton chops on there. Just to make it clear that people are dealing with a grown halfling, not a surly child. I'd like to think that the uh, murder cat and the stabbing would make that clear, but... You know, it doesn't hurt to hedge your bets. And once again, no options that really match what's in the portrait. I mean, I guess this one's pretty close, but it feels like too much. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with this one. As for primary colors... I think we've actually already got that covered. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that's a decent match. Not exact, but pretty close. I think we'll just leave that as is. We do it my way. Nope, sorry. I am this character's voice. Ah, and name. The bane of any RPG player. I will uh, shamelessly admit I agonized over this for far too long. I've never played a halfling before, so I had no idea what sort of name felt right. And ultimately, I just resorted to my usual fallback, which is obscure 80s or 90s comic characters. Though, ironically, I think the last time I actually did that, that character then promptly appeared in a live-action adaptation of that comic. So, not exactly obscure at that point. Nonetheless, say hello to Vex Godglove, Capricious Halfling Hunter, and his pet murder cat, Kaz. There are a few minor tweaks I would have liked to make. Um, I wish we had another skill point for stealth. I wish we had a little bit more wiggle room on strength and charisma. But overall, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Anyway, let's get this train wreck rolling, shall we? Way. Coming through. Fetch a healer, quick. Hey, somebody! We got a wounded fighter. Can we get a healer over here? My, my, would you look at this? But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't he be carted off somewhere else like, oh, I don't know, an infirmary or an accommodating ditch? Love you too, Darren. Make room, everyone! Step back! Now, what's the matter? What happened to him? Hmm. The wound looks nasty. Who did this to him? 
you hear the stern voice of an elderly man. But you're so weak, you can't even turn your head to look in his direction. Demons, prelate. We found him barely alive outside the walls of Canabris. The walls, you say? Enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. Must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. Don't die. We'll see you right. We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard. Take his weapons. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, everyone must abide by the rules. He can get his things back after the festival. Yes, I agree. That should take precedence over saving my life. Oh, inheritor, leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor. Iomade, I beseech you, grant your mercy. Heal his wounds. The magic envelops you, but your pain lessens only slightly. Me. My powers are not enough here. Someone call for Terendalev. You there. Yes, you. Stop dithering and gawping and make yourself useful. Go and get Terendalev. Prelate, surely there is somebody else here better suited to running errands. The lady raises her head in an affectation of surprise. I'll get her! Terendalev! Has anyone seen Terendalev? Be quick about it before it's too late. Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. The old man leans over you. You know, it's crazy, but I don't remember. You don't remember at all? All right, we'll wait until your memory returns. Huh. You know, I really thought he would push back on that. Sure. My dear prelate, please, for the sake of the festivities, stop interrogating this poor man. He has been through enough already. Go on, I'll take care of him. <laughs> All right, as you wish. You are our protector, and a dragon at that. So I shall defer to your wisdom, but be on your guard. I've been informed he was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls and the city is crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday, but not you or I, not the defenders of this city. Muttering discontentedly, the old man walks off. Pry loose the grudging grip of pain. Cast off the veil of suffering flesh. Let light and life go forth in triumph to repel the skulking shade of death. There. A beautiful, silver-haired woman leans over you. She seems ageless, her face wholly unlined. But centuries-old sadness gleams in her eyes. Uh, thanks for helping me, I guess. I accept your thanks, but my work is not yet done. Cool, cool. Um, what exactly happened to me? I do not know yet. And that troubles me. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. This wound is no ordinary injury, and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have rid you of your pain and restored your strength, but only time will allow you to heal fully. Nice, and, um, who are you? My name is Terendalev. I am the protector of the city. So I was uh, kind of out of it when I got here, but did that one guy say you're a dragon? You don't believe me. Perhaps I should retake my true form and engulf this square with my ice breath to win your trust. <laughs> Pay no mind to my current guise. I appear this way when I walk among the people. I would hamper the festivities if I tried to attend in my true form. Cool, cool. I, I do like that joke about murdering everyone. I'm gonna go. Certainly, but be careful. I have managed to get you back on your feet, but I have not healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. Neat. Thanks for that. But do not be discouraged. 
You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Cherendelev, protector of Canabras. We will find a way to help you. But for now, put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. Ah, yes, all this merriment and carousing will help soothe my gaping chest wound. Thank you. Hey, Kaz, what's up? Let's get our uh, snow cat set up. Now, as I mentioned before, leopards are dex based, so we need to keep that in mind. And we'll be able to ride him at four, uh, but until then, we're on foot. They're also one of the only animal companions to have an auto trip on bite. So again, we want to lean into that. We're going to go ahead and grab the bully archetype, which grants us the trip feat. One that you would not normally be able to get on a leopard. From what I understand, that should net us a plus two bonus on our uh, attempts to trip when biting. And then also, more importantly, it'll also serve as a prerequisite for important future feats like Fury's Fall. I did do a little uh, number crunching in my spare time, and uh, it seems pretty reasonable to hit like a plus 20 CMB on tripping by fifth level or so. And then you tag stuff like tandem tripping on top of that. And we should be able to trip just about anything that ends up coming close to us. It does cost us our multi-attack bonus. That, that is unfortunate. But at the end of the day, the uh, secondary paw attacks are just icing on the trippy cake. Nothing fancy for skills. Uh, we're basically just going for mobility and perception, I guess. I was tempted to invest in stealth because of that high dex, but stealth gets weird when you're riding. I think it actually bases the stealth checks on the rider if you're mounted. So in that case, it really wouldn't help us because Vex is not stealthy. If Kaz here could actually make stealth checks on behalf of the party, like when we're camping, then it would be a different story. But for some strange reason, our party won't trust our poor snowcat with that kind of responsibility. They must be dog people. As for feats, right off the bat we can see they're recommending Fury's Fall, and we are going to grab that at level 3. We, however, need to pick up Weapon Finesse, because that is the difference between a plus 1 strength bonus to hit and a plus 7 dex bonus. So it's kind of a no-brainer. Aside from that, we're looking at Weapon Focus Biting and Agile Maneuvers. And then Vex should be ready to pick up Tandem Tripping once we get out towards level 8. Then we have to name this thing, and that, by special raider request, is Kaz. Hello, Kaz. Uh, I have been informed that apparently that means Destroyer of Peace, which does seem like a rather fitting name for a giant murder cat. Or any cat. Cats. Yeah, that's right, I'm talking to you, Kaiser. Stop trying to sit on my keyboard, please. Hmm, that doesn't look right. Uh, one moment. Let me get this straightened out. Ah, I see. It's because our animal focus, by default, set itself to bull. We will just change that to tiger. There we go. That is a bit more what I was expecting. A whopping plus 8 to hit and 24 AC at level 1. Not too shabby. Alright, now we can enjoy the festivities. I do like that um, they populated the festival with a lot of familiar faces. NPCs will be meeting throughout Canabras. But we're not going to worry about talking to anyone right now. We haven't officially met any of these people. Especially not that guy. 
Aravashnil, what are you doing here, buddy? He's from the original adventure path, but he got bounced to make room for another character. I have a feeling something terrible is going to happen. As usual. Yeah? You think so? I'm sure it's nothing. Just relax. Everything's fine. Let's put that dex to good use. Left! Aim further to the left! Huzzah! Get in! Bullseye! Ooh, what about a hundred paces? Can you do it? We'll never know. Bye! Now let's go tie one on before... <laughs> hey there, stranger! Ah, oh, can't actually talk to him. Oh well. Back to getting drunk. Good day, fellow halfling. I love a drink, me. Especially when the city's foot in the bill. What do you say? Another round? Uh, yes, please, but uh, we better make that to go. Behold, Crusader Gods. Behold, Iomane. You poor imposter. Your city will fall to me. Your followers will feed my hunger. Spell. The halfling's armor is splashed with blood, and he is armed to the teeth, with a sword, a blade, and a hatchet on his belt, and a crossbow on his back. His voice sounds familiar to you. Nice hat. I know you from somewhere, don't I? Yeah, you have. You owe me your life. I'm the one who found you outside the walls and brought you inside to be healed. I see they patched you up. Good thing they did it before the attack, or else you'd have been done for. Yeah, yeah. Um, what the hell is the Discari? What am I looking at? You must have got a quick drubbing around the head, brother. Discari's a demon lord, the most fearsome enemy of all crusaders and all living things, come to think of it. Oh, good. So, the... the city? Who knows? Everything's on fire, crashing down around our ears. The place is crawling with demons! Looks like a whole army attacked the city. We're sitting ducks! Excellent, yes, that uh, that does seem fantastic. You mentioned weapons. Sure thing. Here, take this. Best crossbow I've got. The person who made it said it could pierce the hide of a demon lord, even. Well, I'll just take your word on that, shall I? Good luck! Try not to get eaten now! The halfling's words are drowned out by a terrible rumbling and the rustling of countless wings. Ah! A mortal 
cat snaps its jaws at the Lord of Locusts. Behold, Iolane. Behold the death I saw. Yeah, that exchange went about as well as I could have expected it to. That guy did not exaggerate about that crossbow. That was impressive. The silver dragon Terendalev, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. Ah, excellent. Still alive. That is the way I generally prefer it. Kaz, glad you could join us. Now, where exactly are we? Ah, yes, I see. Impromptu mass grave. Perfect. So, you guys good? Uh, oh, holy mother of... <clears throat> a small woman with messy brown hair winces in pain, uttering a stream of curses through clenched teeth. She is pinned to the ground by a couple of weighty boulders. Inappropriate. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole. But at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? The young woman in knight's armor studies the rocks intently, clearly trying to work out how to move them. I feel them all right. One say no to a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me, but my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendalev healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? The night scrutinizes your face momentarily, and raises her hand in greeting. You sure you guys need my help? You realize I'm a halfling, right? What kind of a question is that? We should help her because we're crusaders, not animals or demons. That's why. Wow, Kaz is right here, so ease up on the animal talk. But your casual speciesism aside... I guess you're right. This person does appear to be getting crushed to death, so I suppose we can't just, in good conscience, walk by. The Pendulum of Chaotic Neutral starts on good. I'll have to balance that out later. Alright, let me get my hands on those boulders. Summoning all your strength, you manage to lift the rocks up enough to free the wounded woman from the rubble. Damn it all. I think it's broken. Oh well, I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm a Nevia Tiravade of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened though? Now that I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. The woman feels her leg. Fishing a piece of twine from her pocket, she gets to work. Well, I'm Sila, paladin by the grace of Iomade. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendev and fight demons. And well, I've been fighting for a while now. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendalev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's herald, with the goddess's blessing. 
I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. Zayla's expression darkens. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabres will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? Anevia's eyes shift to you. Well, you know what they say, one person's war is another person's opportunity. I think I was in town to seek my fortune. It does sound like me. Yeah, we've seen plenty of your type before. Sela frowns. At least it's an honest answer. <sighs> now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far, only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. Anevia tightly ties off the twine on her improvised splint, and, leaning on a stick, hauls herself to her feet. To summarize, there are three of us, with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. Sela winks. And thus, our epic adventure has truly begun. In a pit, with a pile of bodies. Eh, I've seen worse. Come on. Aha! Look, Hulrun put all the confiscated weapons in this chest. Take a look. Maybe your things survived the fall. Yes, my things. Clearly, these all belonged to me. Ooh, cold iron short sword. Yes, don't mind if I do. Okay, I can work with this. At least in the short term. Eventually we will want to switch off to a rapier and buckler. Huh. We almost look intimidating. Not bad, Vex. The murder cat does help. Terendalev's scale. A single silvery scale from Terendalev's body. It is warm to the touch and seems to glow softly from within. Oh, I see. So that is essentially a buffer, just in case one of us does manage to slip up enough to outright get ourselves killed. Something I would, of course, prefer to avoid, but, you know, crits happen. Hey there. Who's there? You done? Thank you. The fine apparel of this young half-elf woman is torn and stained with blood, dust, and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven for thinking you were at a high society party and not in the dank catacombs under the city. Her fingers grip her rapier hilt with confidence ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body, so mutilated that, at first glance, it's hard to tell if it's animal or human. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. 
I was also in the square when... when... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought, naively it now seems, that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev... I can't wrap my head around it. Camellia? Huh. The girl relaxes slightly, but she keeps her hand on her sheathed weapon. Her self-control falters for a moment, and you glimpse the fear beneath her mask of perfect placidity. She licks her lips nervously. Yeah, well, it turns out that not many can withstand the strike of a demon lord. Uh, I guess Terendalev was no exception. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive, albeit underground. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Terendalev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a near deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but... Now? <sighs> Anevia shakes her head. We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Camellia finishes Anevia's thought with ruthless precision. Yeah, that is super inspiring. Um, who are you? Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. No need to worry about that. I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier, and I also possess some knowledge of magic. The girl gives an elegant shrug and touches the polished snake skull amulet that hangs around her neck. And, uh, this guy? What's his deal? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Sila's eyes warily scan the area. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. Anevi appears at the dead man's face. Yeah, rest in peace, Vash. At least you got one line this time. And he officially retires with 100% accuracy on his divinations. Not too shabby. Well, it has been great talking, but uh, we should really get moving. Bye. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. Are you coming with us then? The more the merrier, and that blade of yours is nothing to sniff at. Right, right. I was curious what might happen if I, uh, if I didn't actively try to recruit her. About what I expected. Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kinda need all the supplies we can get right now. You heartless brigand. That corpse had a name. It was Aravashnail. Ar Ar Show some gosh darn respect. He said as he blithely wandered off with the masterwork dagger in his pocket. Looks like we're in for a fight here. Some nice low-level enemies to warm up on. We don't have any ranged strikers to take the first shot at the moment, so... Let's get the murder cat up front. Oh, good, that did work. Zombies. 
I am going to try to keep these fights moving at a decent clip. At least until we get past the first level stuff. not one to question you, game, but, uh, are you sure you know what a critical hit is? Crit for crit. Truly a battle of epic proportions. We are going to eventually need to switch off to something lighter, leather or padded. But not just yet. While we are redlining it on encumbrance, that extra two points of AC is pretty valuable right now. Oh, look at that. At this rate, we're uh, well on our way to building our own dragon. Finally got Animal Companions full attack schemes working. That's nice. Die, please. Thank you. What's on your mind? I want Rely on me. No? Didn't feel like attacking this time? That's cool. Do they? That's not unsettling. Once again, we emerge triumphant from another epic battle. And as our reward, Another batch of mementos from the fallen heroes of Canabras. Let me give this one to my cat. Oh. 
What kind of fly-by-night operation is this? This will not stand. Foes fall before us like chitinous wheat. What else do you have for us, vile cave? Oh, lizard. This thing can poison us, so that does warrant some caution. Truly mighty blow. We worked hard for that. Truly a richly deserved victory. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. You struggle to make out the man's features in the gloom. As soon as he steps into the circle of light, however, you realize that you have never encountered a creature like this before. The stranger looks like the work of a vivisectionist who attempted to stitch together a lizard and a man. When do I? The man notices you and freezes. The curling horn protruding from his head casts a malevolent shadow on the cave wall. Lan, did you find it? Who is that? The woman looks just as strange as her companion, like a cross between a cat and a spider. When she catches sight of you, she immediately drops into a fighting stance. Her movement reveals the lethal grace of a wild predator. The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. What am I looking at? What are you guys? Tieflings? Tieflings are the descendants of people who sullied themselves by mating with demons. Our ancestors would never sink that low. We are the Underground Crusaders, the children of the Crusade's finest. Wendwag's face twists scornfully. Sadly, Underground Crusaders is a bit of a mouthful, so people usually just call us mongrels. <laughs> you just love repeating that, don't you, Lan? Mongrels. That's what the Uplanders call us. But we call ourselves Neethers. No matter what you call us, it's not gonna stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. I don't know. I ain't never heard of no underground crusaders before. In Canabras, they're called mongrels. 
People say that they come up to the surface at night and eat anyone foolish enough to wander alone after midnight. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I thought you guys were just a tale to tell kids at night. Oh good, that does put my mind at ease. Thank you, Sila. Huh. That's human gratitude for you. Our forefathers suffered the consequences of demonic corruption, all to protect Mendev and Galarian. And for what? So we could become monsters used to frighten children. Yeah, it's just tough all over. <sighs> Every mongrel has their own take on it. Our chief, for example, thinks of us as something like a reserve military force. He thinks we're standing by until the moment we're needed, and when we emerge on the surface and save the day, all the people will see how good we are and they'll love us for it. Yeah, he leaves that last part out when he talks about it, of course, but it's easy enough to read between the lines. Cool. So, uh, I have not heard any compelling reasons to tell you anything. Counterpoints? I just thought it might be nice to know why the roof was shaking. Lan tries to appear nonchalant, but he is visibly agitated. What happened on the surface has caused problems for us, and we need to fix them. You know what? That's fair. Uh, it is a slight problem for us as well, what with the uh, full-scale demon invasion and all that. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. Land's expression hardens. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface but the maze. I realize that you guys have your own troubles. But we need to be in Canabres. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. Hey, uh, what is this place anyway? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. This is where the relics of the First Crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short, our glories are quickly forgotten, but this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else, and that our lives are not lived in vain. Huh, the first Crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. Yes, and goodness knows, today has been a perfectly normal, non-crazy day. How you guys doing? That's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sol, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the holy sword, we might be able to change the chief's mind. <laughs> it's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which... You're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. Wenduog shrugs and turns away. A sword of holy flame. Um, forgive me if I sound skeptical, but how did that wind up down here? It came here with its owner a long time ago. 50,000 gongs, to be precise. 70 years ago, in Uplander time. 
Fifty thousand gongs ago, our forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave them a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. Maybe the angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. Len! Watch your tongue. To be fair, stranger things have happened. This maze, um, will that really get us out of here? Yes. There are other ways up, but they are far from here, and after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the underground crusaders. That the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. <laughs> Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendwag too much. His eyes are filled with genuine concern. Don't try to blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. You hear a hint of emotion in Wendoog's voice for the first time. I don't know, I felt like she was already being plenty emotional. Mostly snarky and disgusted. Well, I would love to help you, but uh, I am not sure you can afford it. Can you? <laughs> of course. How about we do this? You help us, and we don't leave you here to rot in these underground tunnels that only we know. I think that sounds fair. Yes, that uh, proposal does pique my interest. Go on. Yeah, and we could throw in a dozen fresh rats to sweeten the deal. That's a tempting offer in these parts. Help us, and we'll help you. This is very important. Wendoog believes the maze leads to the outside. She knows what she's talking about. All right, underground folks, you got yourselves a deal. But if you find the sword first, don't forget we helped you. Our agreement still stands. And thus, a pact was forged. In exchange for not dying in a cave and uh, also a dozen rats, our hero Vex God Glove agreed to help the underground crusaders in their quest to find a sword that no one can pick up. That does sound practical. But, you know, um, I do like the part of the agreement where we don't die in a cave. That is something on my bucket list. What's the worst that could possibly happen? That said, uh, we are past the hour mark, so I think we're at a pretty good breaking point. Let's hit the pause button for now. We'll get this thing packed up and online. And we will pick up here next time, as we track down the unwieldable sword, and hopefully find our way out of the Death Cave. Adventure awaits. See you then.
Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel and help me make more videos like this one, feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description. Yeah, we've seen plenty of your type before.